karma and jnana and like we should try to like minimize our speculations and like that. Uh, but I was just thinking because I often find myself speculating on like how to yeah, distribute book to that person or preach in that circumstance or that circumstance. So that is also like yeah, the mind is speculating. Should I do like this or should I do like that? Or could this be done or like so Well actually uh, you may say that that type of thought that may actually not come on the category of speculation, that may come that may actually fall into the category of engaging one's intelligence uh, in Krishna, in Krishna's service. As we know in the 12th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, which deals with devotional service, 12 8, says, Maya, uh, was it not? Mana Ahad at Spa? How was that verse? You know this verse? 12 8. Maya Eva Mana Ahad at Spa, Mai Buding Nivesaya, Maya Eva Nivesisasi, Ata Udva Nasamsaya. I think it's like that. And that means that just engage all your intelligence in me. Just fix your mind upon me and engage all your intelligence in me. And thus you will live in me always without doubt. So engage your intelligence in me. So that me, Krishna, that uh, includes this devotional service, which is not different. So if you engage your intelligence how to serve the Lord better, for how to please the Lord better, then that uh, exactly comes in the category of devotional service. Then it's not speculation like that, as we say jnana here. Because jnana, when Rupa Goswami he speaks about jnana, then that jnana is more like the speculation of the, uh, you can say, uh, the impersonalists or the Mayavadis. You can say, or you can say more suitable, the New Age persons. They just uh, have some idea that there's something spiritual and they speculate what it is and they go to that shop, they go to that seminar, you know, who says all different things and what's the meaning of life. So that type of speculation about what's the ultimate destination and what's the process to go there. That type of speculation, that is more of a group of young, because that can be all different directions. And then Babu Shaka, you know, our intelligence becomes many branches. And we cannot have that ekaha kuranandana. So that type of speculation, which uh, takes you away from that ekaha kuranandana, which is ultimately simply to satisfy the law. And uh, you can ask yourself the question that your speculation is it helpful uh, in uh, pleasing the Lord more? By your speculation, do you uh, do you think? That, that pleases the Lord more, that you are able to satisfy the spiritual master and the Lord more by that speculation. And if you may think that actually no, then you may think that maybe there's something wrong in it. But if you can say yes, the speculation, it, uh, uh, it, it's actually, I'm, I'm learning some new things and I'm able to, some tangible results is, is coming from it, that gives you encouragement that it's okay, and the spiritual master he confirms it then, you may say that, okay, it's not, it's, not, it's not that type of jnana. It is actually engaging intelligence in Krishna. That's what, uh, that's what, the, uh, what it is. And then you can say, uh, then you can be a bit more reassured. But I think uh, you will have to uh, get that reassurance from your spiritual master like that. And from your own experience also, eventually when you look at it in the long run, you know, how is it beneficial? Mm. Um, yes, so I think I would say that. Thank you, Thank you, Okay, was there any other question? Sven? Mother? Yeah, we <clears throat> were talking about in the class how we behave and think about Krishna and um, talk about him, um, about his music qualities and what he's doing. And like you talk about the Shiva Devna. So I'm thinking in daily life, the, the association between each other has to be very strong. And, and I'm thinking, can you also try to explain how we actually should relate to each other in our daily life in a sober, devotional way? So we can understand we care for each other and, and know we want to develop Krishna consciousness between each other. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, Mark, that's actually uh, uh, maybe the most most important question. You know, because if, if we can get this right, then there's absolutely uh, no bar for us to get, you know, really uh, that real bliss, that real bliss and satisfaction which Krishna is talking about in the in the in the ten nine. So there, there are many uh, important you know, instructions that give us some direction, some good direction in this regard. And first of all, uh, we have um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. He gave the Sikshastaka, and which in the third verse is Trinada Pisunichina, Tarora Pisunichina, Amanina Amanina, Tirtanina Sadamani. That one should be more humble than a blade of grass, one should be more tolerant than a tree devoid of all sense of false prestige and ready to offer all respects to others. And in such a state of mind one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. So this uh, humility and tolerance and, uh, and uh, you know, seeing the uselessness of a false prestige and being ready and able actually to give respect to others, if that is there in our character, in our consciousness, then we'll be able to constantly chant the whole names of all. So uh, these are things we try to cultivate. We try to cultivate that humility and we try to cultivate tolerance. And tolerance is cultivated because we have our false ego, you see. And when somebody comes and pinches our false ego, then we try to retaliate. And uh, when we uh, when we retaliate against someone, you know, somebody comes and steps on us, does, does something, and if we become angry, and if that uh, anger, we want to vent it out uh, on them, then we find later on, we think, oh, we shouldn't have done that. You know, this was not, uh, this was not. So this, this we have to practice amongst ourselves, because sometimes we step each other on, on it. We do something to disturb others. We, uh, we, we do many little things which get on it, uh, which anger us, anger each other. And uh, we may feel the need to act out anger, but we should see this anger. What is it? Is it that anger? Is it meant for that person's benefit so that he will learn? And he will. Is it educational anger, or is it coming out sense of uh, come, coming out of sense of you know uh, of a false ego type of anger? Then that, that, that we should analyze. We should be introspective and see that, and then we can you know avoid this uh, avoid this part. You know, becoming uh, unnecessarily like. Uh, angry at each other for things that we should uh, more tolerate and, uh, and and then to see our motives are we like really if we if you use some anger sometimes is it like done in a pure way like simply for educational purposes if, if it's there if it is that then we can immediately cut off the anger immediately we don't keep it we just use it like a scalpel like a doctor uses a scalpel and when the cut is made he puts the scalpel on the shelf you know, he leaves it like that so this is one aspect and then uh, another aspect is every morning we say this prayer after the Tulsi, uh, Tulsi RT, we say, let's offer our humble obeisance to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. We're just like the Sire trees who can fill the desires of everyone and are full of compassion to all of all Krishna souls. So Kalpa Rikshas, devotees are described as Kalpa Rikshas. So this one thing, so how can we see the devotees as Kalpa Rikshas? Because if we actually saw the devotees as Kalpa Rikshas, how much respect would we have for them? How much you know, value would we put on their existence that we are in their association, we are in association of Kalpa Rikshas? These personalities, they can fulfill all our desires. So how do we go from simply theoretically speaking about this and saying this in the morning to actually realizing that these devotees, they are actually Kalpa Rikshas. And a Kalpa Rikshas, they can give you everything you want. You know. So I was thinking that what is actually that devotee can give you which you can't get from anywhere else? What is that thing? Devotee actually he can give you Krishna. And when you get Krishna, you get everything because everything is included in Krishna. So how is it that devotees they give us Krishna? Well the most important way actually, prominent way is the one in ten nine itself, which we already recited, Matchita Matkata Prana. That they give you kata, they give you sound vibration of Krishna as is 
Guna, Rupa, Lila, as we're trying to talk today. And by their giving you that, you get direct association with Krishna. It's not different. The Katha of Krishna is not different from Krishna. So the devotee is able to give you that sound vibration. You can't get it. If you go out to the neighbor, ask him about Krishna, he won't be able to say you five words even, not even a, a syllable. He may know there's Krishna, there's something called Krishna. But he will not be able to give you that sound vibration. You can't get it. You get that vibration from the devotees only. That's why you may see them as Kalpariksha. Because when you get that sound vibration from a devotee, you get Krishna. And by getting Krishna, you get everything. And that is why a devotee is actually a Kalpariksha. So we have to get Krishna from each other. You have to get Krishna from the devotees because they can give Krishna to you. And when you become eager in that way to get Krishna, do that sound vibration, then you'll be very much inspired to be very nicely uh, taking care of the devotees, very nicely behaving towards the devotees, because they are giving you Krishna. So how, how, can we become ang how can we become offensive to a Kalpavriksha who is giving us Krishna? We can't. So if we can see these devotees in this light, we'll never you know, fall into this, uh, this, uh, this urge to become offensive when that comes up. We'll be able to control this anger. If we're constantly getting that uh, summer base, and getting associated with Krishna, in associating with each other. So this is just, just some few small points. And if we take them to heart and try to practice it, because we have to endeavor to, we have to sometimes ask each other, do you have some time? Would you like to sit and read a little bit with me? You know, we can read, you want to read, I want to read uh, a Bhagavata, Bhagavad Gita. So we sit together, we read, and we just ask each other, what do you read? Because sometimes we also be, what should we say? I ask you, can you tell me something about Krishna? And then maybe something doesn't come immediately. And also we haven't read so much even. We haven't read the Bhagavad Gita so, so, so in depth. We haven't read the Bhagavad Gita so in depth. So maybe that we don't feel, we can't speak very nicely because we don't know so nicely. But simply, if you sit and read for one hour, immediately then you have read something. And then you can speak a little bit something what you read. Then you're able to give a little katana. So then if you simply do that, take the help of Prabhupada, because he is a very great Kalpariksha. And he gave us Bhagavatam, he gave us Bhagavad Gita. So if you just read a little bit from his books, and then you explain, like in Amahatma, we also do that. We read something, and then we talk. Like that, if you take help of Srila Prabhupada, then you can be an agent of that sound motivation. You can actually give Krishna to someone. That's actually the great boon we will see from Prabhupada. He gave us the ability to give Krishna to others. So how much of a great Kalpariksha is not Srila Prabhupada? So, uh, that was just a few things. I think we have exhausted our questions for now. So, I will say uh, thank you all very much for your kind attention. Shiva Pauka, Kitai, Shi, Shikade, Pauka, Kitai, Shiva, Palamaraj, Ki, Shiva.